everybody, it's Dave. Thank you so much for tuning in as always. This will be my last video before I get married in just a couple of days. Feeling a little bit nervous about that, but also excited as well. And then it'll be off for a two week honeymoon. Not to worry though, I do have a few different videos scheduled for you during that couple week period while I'll be away. So it's not gonna be complete radio silence on the channel, but definitely will slow down a bit over the next couple weeks. Today we're rounding up all the latest news around Neutron rocket development, and there's been a lot over the past several weeks, so I'm excited to share all that with you. Before we dive into Neutron updates though, if you're new here, please do consider hitting subscribe by the end of the video. It will... Every new subscriber is very much appreciated, and if you are already a subscriber, well, those comments and likes and shares always help out as well, of course. All right, guys, let's go ahead and dive into Rocket Lab's Neutron development updates. So starting off with a fun tweet here from Tim Ellis, CEO of Relativity. He tweeted out that flight hardware for Terran R is in full swing and more updates in the coming weeks, including big news. Uh, he was actually asked by someone on Twitter if they're going to beat Rocket Lab's Neutron and Tim replied, yes, LOL. Peter later replied to this with a Kermit the Frog meme. If you're not too familiar with it, it usually along the bottom says, but that's none of my business. So saying like, you know, we're going to execute or whatever, but that's what you're doing is none of my business or something like that. I think it's pretty funny and it really just <laughs> shows, you know, game on between these two. I kind of like the banter and the back and forth competition. Both of these CEOs incredibly confident in their own design and process. And, you know, we'll see what rocket is more successful. Okay, so here we have a handy dandy neutron diagram showing all the various parts of the rocket and how they come together. First off, we're going to start at the bottom, focusing on the Archimedes engine because propulsion is usually one of the long poles in the tent is I guess the term they like to use or basically the biggest tasks they have to get a new rocket going. And there's been a lot of progress on the neutron front. So we're going to start today's video by diving in to NASA's Stennis Space Center where Rocket Lab has an engine test stand and they are testing the Archimedes engine. Some of this may be review for you if you've been following Archimedes development and Neutron development closely over the past few months. But in the past couple months, Rocket Lab has put Archimedes through hundreds of tests to validate their design, including spin primes, ignition tests, as well as understanding all the startup and shutdown transients. All of that work accumulated in a recent successful Archimedes hot fire. They started off with a series of low power hot fires with great results and then cranked it up to put the engine through its paces. They've now reached a main stage hot fire of 102% power as of Rocket Lab's most recent earnings call on August 8th. From here, it's all about dialing the engine in, building a bunch more of them to get them rolling off the production line. The team's been pushing hard to get the first flight articles through qualification. So while the team's made great progress at Stennis testing this first Archimedes engine, it's important to remember that this is a production engine, not some Pathfinder, and equally important to the first test firing of this first article is the factory and productions to keep them rolling off the line at a high pace. That's why next we're heading over to Long Beach to Rocket Lab's new engine development facility, which they took over from Virgin Orbit. Quite handily is qu right across the road from Rocket Lab's USHQ. First of all, of course, extremely exciting is that Peter Beck did tweet the next two Archimedes engines already rolling off the production line. So as I said, this is the planned flight version of the engine. It's not some kind of pathfinder or test engine. They really do intend to have these roll off the line ready to go. So two more ready to go. And uh, I'm sure there's a lot more where that comes from. The great thing about this engine development center is that they got it from Virgin Orbit for 16 cents on the dollar along with a ton of equipment and really just a great deal that accelerated the development of the Neutron program. We also did get a really cool 3D printing video dropping from Rocket Lab's Twitter account. About 90% of the mass of Archimedes engines is 3D printed, including this turbine housing structure that we're seeing right now. Basically, I, from what I understand, lasers are melting a metal powder in, on top of a substrate, building out the structure of this turbine housing. Incredibly cool stuff and just looks awesome as well to see. 
So yeah, definitely Relativity is not the only one using that 3D printing technology. Now next up, after we've checked in on the Archimedes engine's progress, let's take a look at some of the structures. We've had a ton of great news here as well, things really starting to come together. Starting off with the fairings and canards at the top of the rocket, we have a great large image here of one of the two fairing halves that will open and close. These fairings protect the delicate satellites during ascent through the atmosphere and make sure they don't get damaged before opening to release the satellites and that second stage into orbit. The unique feature here with these fairings is that they stay attached to that first stage, making it much more easier to relaunch, not having to fish them out of the water, refurbish them, any of that kind of stuff. So great progress seen on the fairings. The canards, I think, are still a little bit earlier, but we do have a nice picture here of those flaps on the side near the top that will help steer the rocket back in through re-entry. We've also seen the stage two tanks here near the top. This is the second stage that will come out through the top of the rocket and continue boosting those satellites into orbit. Very high efficiency, incredibly light second stage. This entire giant tank is just the size of a Harley Davidson motorcycle because they're using carbon fiber technology to lay down extremely thin layers of carbon fiber using AFP machines, but more on that in a little bit. Looking a little bit further down, we also have stage one tanks that will, that will hold fuels for the rockets, as well as some stage one structures here forming the sides and structure of the rocket. So really a lot of structures coming together and it's really not hard to see at this point how when you put all these pieces together, you're starting to get a full complete rocket. As I've said previously, first structures and parts of the rocket are important, but even more important is the factories, machines, and basically the machine that builds the machine. So for those reasons, we're now going to hop over to Rocket Lab's new Maryland Middle River facility that they took over from Lockheed Martin, which is scheduled to become Rocket Lab's new space structures complex and where a lot of these structures are going to be pumped out in high volume. Rocket Lab recently released a pretty cool video of their new carbon fiber AFP machine or automated fiber placement that will build out the structures of a lot of their largest components, including these seven meter domes and barrels, as well as 12 meter long panels that will protect that second stage as it rises through the atmosphere. Traditionally, building out these carbon fiber structures are done by hand, and currently it takes a large team several weeks to build a stage two dome. But this machine can make one in 24 hours. It changes direction of the carbon being laid down quickly and lays down hundreds of layers of incredibly thin carbon composite fiber, and it can push out hundreds of meters per minute. These layers of carbon fiber are put over a mold to form the desired shape. This AFP machine is the biggest of its kind in the world as well as the highest performing for its size out there. It also, as well as laying down the fiber, performs automated real-time inspections, searching for minuscule defects as it lays down the fiber and will notify operators of any issues prior to starting the next layer in order to maintain the highest quality standards. This AFP machine is absolutely fascinating and it will be key to pumping out these large structures for Rocket Lab in the future. Extremely fascinating stuff and very exciting to see Rocket Lab get a great deal on that Middle River facility and really accelerate the schedule of Neutron development. Now that we've seen those stage one tanks as well as a lot of the large stage one structures and fairings, let's take a quick look at stage two. Not a ton new here, but we did previously see the first model of a stage two being tested to failure and a great explosion here as they filled it with more and more gases to see how much pressure it could take. Rocket Lab has taken the learnings from that and made some changes and continues to work on the next second stage tank, making it even better. They've also shared some great pictures of their flight computers and avionics getting ready to go for Neutron. Peter Beck did confirm on their most recent earnings call that they've largely progressed past the design phase and are moving swiftly into production and qualification of flight hardware for 100% of the vehicle. Referring back to Rocket Lab's Neutron path to liftoff on their website, we can see that the hardware in the loop 
flight to orbit testing has turned green, meaning this has been completed. Basically what this refers to is the process of testing a vehicle's hardware by integrating it into a software environment and simulating different real life scenarios for the hardware to react to. A vehicle's components and subsystems will interact with each other cooperatively, so the function of smaller components is going to affect how the entire vehicle operates and they just want to make sure everything operates properly in simulation before actually trying to fly it in reality. This stage is now completed. Also exciting to note on this path to liftoff, we finally do have that first Archimedes engine hot fire stage turning to green from yellow. So they have successfully completed that and are moving further down the path to liftoff. Now in progress is flight mechanisms tests to test critical flight mechanisms, including fairing actuation, which is opening and closing those fairings to let out that second stage. Separation systems, as well as control surfaces for steering the rocket for re-entry and actuator. We also now have in progress the stage one build, which is extremely exciting to me. I can't wait to see this whole thing come together and stand on the launch pad. It will be a thing of beauty, that's for sure. Launch Complex 3 is also under production. So the th items that remain to get going here are a stage two static fire where they'll be mounting a vacuum optimized Archimedes engine onto a stage two and firing that as well as a stage one static fire firing all nine Archimedes engines on that first stage, testing it just like it would fly. Once that's done, they'll be looking to integrate the full vehicle together with the second stage being put inside that first stage, getting ready to go. Then a wet dress rehearsal, which is a final systems check before launch. And finally, we'll be getting that first launch, hopefully in 2025, if there's no further delays. So now that we've checked in on the progress of Archimedes as well as a lot of the parts of Neutron and testing, I think it's time we took a look at the launch infrastructure, the launch pad, how they'll put things together, and where the progress is on that. For this, we're heading over to Wallops Island, Virginia. We can see on the map here that Neutron's launch pad is going to be right below their current Electron launch pad in Wallops, mostly being used for haste right now. And Virginia really seems to be ramping up as a go-to destination for rocket launchers with Firefly and others also planning to launch out of this location. We can see in a picture here, recently tweeted from Rocket Lab on August 21st, their fancy new water tower is complete and they have a lot of rebar and concrete going in as well as earthworks underway to build out this site. We do also have some new structures in the back here behind the launch tower. Let's take a closer look at those. From this angle, we can see a little bit more of the progress that is going on with the launch pad infrastructure as well as a pretty cool earth ramp here that if I had to judge, I would say is definitely for Peter Beck's rocket bike to go off the ramp in a massive jump. That must be what that is, right? <laughs> Looks like some of the new things we have in the left is a pre-staging area with a lot of the vaporizers. Bottom left is groundwork. On the right here, we can see the start of the CH4 farm and a ton of metal rebar cage next to the pad is for the water bucket progress. Right above that rebar cage is groundwork that should have some lightning towers in there. And in the top middle is the gaseous commodity farm, which will store things like helium, high pressure gaseous oxygen, as well as high pressure gaseous nitrogen and methane. And we are talking about very high pressures here as well. In terms of the development timeline for Neutron, we're still looking quite good. If they hit their current target, it will be built out in 4.3 years after the announcement of the rocket. This beats the Falcon 9 at 4.8 years and kills the New Glenn, Vulcan, and Ariane 6 which have taken a very long time to develop. Demand for medium lift is also very strong in the future. According to the quality space study called Satellite Demand Outlook 2023, more than 10,000 satellites need launch services by 2030, excluding Starlink and Chinese and Russian constellations. That's all the updates I have for you today. I hope you found this interesting and informative. Personally, I think the Neutron progress is looking great and could be on schedule for a 2025 launch. I certainly hope so. I think the team is moving incredibly fast. We're seeing a lot of progress on the launch pad infrastructure. 
as well as the machine that builds the machine ramping up. Archimedes is looking good. I can't wait till that first full hot fire video once we receive it. I think it's going to look amazing. It sounds like the structures are going well with that new AFP machine being able to crank them out in record time. The former Virgin Orbit facility is really ramping up Archimedes production. Sounds like they have plenty of room there, perhaps even too much room. And the Maryland facility is going to be great for building out all those structures we spoke about previously. So all really starting to come together and grander scheme of things looking at that timeline rocket lab has shared on their website uh, a lot of progress being made with with items going from yellow to green and from being not started to yellow so looking forward to that second stage hot fire soon and the actual assembly of the first stage of the rocket let me know how you think neutron development is going Anything you think I might have missed, any comments, concerns, thoughts, I'll check them out down in the comments below. Hope you did enjoy this video. If so, and you're not subscribed already, please do give me a subscribe. And if you are, those likes and comments always help out as well. I hope you guys have a great day. I'm off to travel on my honeymoon, so I'll see you guys when I get back in a couple weeks. See you next time. Bye for now.